Hey folks, and welcome to Monday, the 29th of November, 2021. Uh, first day back from being in the States, um, visiting with my brokers and with family. Um, really nice trip. Uh, very, very, very quiet in Chicago around the CME, I have to say. Um, it really did well coming up to uh, coming into um, Thanksgiving I suppose it uh, would have been quite quiet but um, yeah uh, things things really on lockdown out in the states and um, to a large degree in Chicago not people not working from the office uh, the likes but uh, yeah so what we've seen really um, the fireworks coming on Thanksgiving day uh, last Friday uh, or, well sorry Thursday and uh, Black Friday uh, bringing in massive, massive volatility. Uh, the VIX was up 54% in its biggest one-day rise. Um, of course, over what we, what we are told is the Omicron variant of COVID-19 uh, outbreak seen, a well, small outbreak seen in, uh, in uh, South Africa. And um, in the subsequent hours and days since now, we're seeing uh, a spread of that into Europe and um, and uh, US, I think has one or two cases right now. So, um, you know, the effect on the on these markets has has been uh, has been aggressive, and um, we're going to have a look at these markets now. So I'm going to going to spend about five to ten minutes going through Euro, Cable, Gold, Dax, Nasdaq, Spooz, Dow, uh, the bonds, oil, and the dollar. Um, so, you know, what's what's Quite interesting to me is that we have not opened with a gap down this morning in the European session. Um, we've actually opened uh, on the electronic session with a gap up on the DAX. Um, we haven't had such a aggressive buying for the gaps up um, on US equities, but nonetheless, we, are, we do see some dip bars coming in here. Um, so, you know, that leads me to believe that um, it's 50 50 right now so anyway let's get over and have a look at these charts right and let's get into the euro and um, just before we get into the you know the nitty-gritty on this here's the euro uh, on the weekly bars uh, we've seen seen really you know just a steady degradation on the price of the euro to the dollar uh, dropping down through some serious prices here down through the 13.050 level uh, last week um holding below there and you can see really um on the 21st i think this was uh yeah i was actually off the prior day here so we just kept going south essentially on on the euro dollar um you know to try and then now bounce back up 13.050s uh can't do it can't can't get back above so for me I don't know about being further short on this market for now uh given the excess we've seen on the lows last week um, you, you know, you see pretty much uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday here trying, attempting to go lower. Just can't do it, though. And um, that is essentially showing us excess on the lows on last week. Uh, for me to be long on the euro, it is going to have to get back above 13.050, put in a bit of a base. And then I'll be quite happy to swing this thing back up to at least like the 14.390s. Um, but on, until that happens, um, I am going to be short minded on this i am going to be looking for the shorts um and that's really that uh you know you can't you can't look at the, at the euro dollar without looking at the dixie um world's only globally traded currency and uh here we are you know i mean we we've been aware of the resurgence of the dollar um you know from the 8th of november this week here um, you know, full surging uh, the week I had it off, you know, and last week then putting in excess on the highs, um, you know, given the Delta risk variant um, would probably be uh, quite dilutive to the Dixie. You're going to have a further accommodation on the Fed side. They, they're, you know, if we do get into, uh, you know, further lockdowns, working from home, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're looking at more stimulus checks, and you know, just as the Fed was getting close to, uh, high, well, not let's not say hiking, but they they had certainly commenced on the reduction in bond purchases. You know, I think uh, I think a further spread 
and a further lockdown um, in, in multiple states. Um, well, number one, that's going to be very hard for Joe Biden to do, given that the governors in these states are quite independent and uh, there is very little appetite for a further lockdown now. However, um, if we do see that go across the line, further lockdowns and waiting and waiting until we get another, um, another vaccine um, that will cater to Omicron, um, that's going to be another 100 days. And so, therefore, if you do have that lockdown until we get to that point, you are going to see uh, probably a little bit of weakness in this dollar um, before it then finds a footing. So, uh, you know, what I'm talking about is you could, with the excess on the highs that we've seen last week, you could see this market just coming back to test, for example, to test um, on the compression area that was resistance right here. See, it was resistance. Um, below the 94 spot 63s and now of course resistance turning support and so we might might have to find that support and prove that support uh, but either way you know i'm not going to try and solve the biggest puzzle in the market right now is what is you know what is the u.s economy going to turn out like over the next three four weeks and um, you know if if i knew that answer on a consistent basis i i would be sitting on an island somewhere so uh that's the, that's the currency space uh, for me, I do have to believe in the, in the stronger dollar. I think the one of these one of these markets is going to have to wipe out its excesses on the like on the highs or the low. And I think if either one of those markets is going to do it, it's going to be the euro will continue to print lower into the excesses on the lows that it had last week. Right. So I think you know, euro down, further upside on the dollar. You're going to see gold finding it very hard to live above eighteen hundreds. And, you know, that is a nice segue into gold here. So, you know, a couple of different areas of interest on gold. Um, chiefly, you know, you have to look at the 1800 level, which pretty much is bang in the middle of this, um, of this uh, pennant formation here. Um, 1804 is there in the center. So, you know, it's, it's, it, this is a hard trade. Personally, I'm not looking to make money on gold. Um, because it's it's a very tricky trade at the moment. You got to be looking at the real yield. I think the only thing gold has going for it is that you may see further uh, downside in bonds, up upside in uh, or sorry, you might see further upside in bonds and downside in the real yield, which has an inverse correlation to gold, as in gold up, right? So bonds up, gold up, pretty much is the simplest way to put that. Um, I think that's the best thing that gold has going for it. But, you know, you're going to have to see it happening. And uh, what does that translate to? It translates to T-notes on the weekly chart here. So if you want to be long gold, you want to be long T-notes. And hands up, who wants to buy T-notes right now? Well, not Tim Duggan, let me tell you. This is weak as a kitten, headed for 129.10s in my estimation, which is the high of the week of the 3rd of September, 2019. All right. So, uh, you know, it, it's not shaping up for gold. Unfortunately, it's, you know, it's uh, the Cinderella of markets, if you ask me. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's just not getting an invite to the party. No how, no way, um, until something happens in this bond picture. So, you know, it's probably, this is, I don't want to get too deep on this, but this is probably why we didn't see inflation coming out of the, 0809 stimulus packages um into like you know 2014 and 15 there was no inflation and there's something there anyway with that in the bonds um all right let's keep moving on uh the bond it's in a similar state of disrepair to be honest um i think the bond you could see a push on the bond um further higher given that you know the picture in europe a little scarier in terms of um infection as an infection uh, scenario i think so you could see the bonds uh, get up there quite quite bigger uh, or sorry quite faster and um, in germany you know for example and um, but we're definitely compressing here to be honest in, in range so you know i think we've seen the bottom of the range i think we need to see the top of this uh, range it's sort of pennant structure uh, I think this is kind of shaping up uh, for a breakout on the upside. So 
So, you know, with that, you could see, you know, you could see gold appreciate if you do start to see the bonds picking up because the Germans do love gold. That has to be said. Um, all right. And then, you know, segueing into the DAX. Here we are on the DAX. I have not changed or touched this chart since uh, I left. And so we do have this channel up um in goal or sorry dax on the weekly bars and uh, you know we we're hugging the top of this channel and um, that 16 164s which is an 88.6 extension fib extension uh really coming in with massive selling here i mean what sort of downside have we seen on uh dax last week what 7.27 percent i really did miss the party actually on this didn't i um all right so what do I see happening here on the DAX? Um, I don't know. Uh, I need to. I need to take it easy. Tune into the markets a wee bit more uh, before I start making some grandiose sort of <laughs> calls here. But uh, for me, we do have a just a little bit of a gap that was uh, outstanding there, which is now very filled um, from last week. Uh, you know, filled here, and um, we. I'm seeing support coming in this morning. Fifteen two eighty six is on that gap high, uh, which you know obviously was filled on Friday, um, but now retesting that gap high, holding a bid. Um, I think yeah, if the market was overdone last week, we should be headed for fifteen six eleven. Actually, I'm going to delete these um, fib extensions now. Uh, so we should be headed for fifteen six ninety eight over the course of either today or tomorrow um, should should we hold this area i mean if we don't hold this area it's going to be back to the 50 ema as we had on friday um, and and it's probably a breakdown there to test on the channel low which is coming in 14 7 60s right um do i want to buy 14 7 60s uh i want to buy that general area yeah for sure am i going to sit with limit orders there Probably not. I want to fly with my hand on the steering wheel, um, on the stick here, and so I'd, I'd be you know watching that like a hawk, see how it trades, and then kind of you know hopefully I get it within market hours, you know that we could buy this area and sort of swing it back higher in the channel. Um, but as I said, for me, for me, I do, I don't want to see that Omicron uh variant bleeding its way into into europe over the course of today and tomorrow uh, for that trade uh, you know it's going to diminish my expectations for the longs um rightly so i think so nasdaq all right let's have a look this is my first look at the nasdaq chart since i left and right well there you go 1600 health huh we'll look at that uh let's zoom in and see what the action was on the week um, why don't I do this up so we'll take everything off from my daily chart so we can see everything clearly yeah okay uh, alright into the 20 EMA on Friday crushed and then bounced a little this does not look clean to me uh, just looking at this naked chart, I actually would just say we're going down on this thing now. Then I overlay my daily char chart um, areas. I mean, look, buying that level on Friday was an absolute winner. Um, holding it into the weekend, not something I would do um, with this level of risk um, in the marketplace. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I want to reserve judgment on which way we're going to cut on this on the open. Um, but I would be... Would I be looking to get involved in 16 again? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I'd get involved in 16s. Otherwise, I'd be waiting for a 50 EMA test and, and actually a 15701s test down the bottom. Um, you know, here's the daily. So, you know, breakdown in the 16s. Really, if you're not short that market, you have no business like nipping into longs below 16s here on this market. You would, you know, you need to. You cannot buy this market if it's if it's breaking down below 16s you know if it's closing like 30 minute bars 15 minute bars below the 16s that's that's big big trouble for the longs big big trouble so you know do not start scaling into this thing because it will rip your face off as it comes down to 50 ema and 15701 so 
just keep, you know, keep yourselves out of trouble there, guys. And uh, yeah, and we do start to break down. So cracking the five by some really want to crack the five there. Um, okay, okay. Uh, spooze, the big one. Spooze and the daily. I was looking at this earlier. Um, Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, look, tracking quite too many levels actually here, to be honest. Um, at least an example here. Still, technically, there is still a gap actually um, down at 4,000, would you believe? Um, now, I don't see that move happening at all, but I am going to track that gap. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the move was overdone last week. I think there are buyers now that can easily push. I think this, you know, if the market was to go any higher than this all-time high, 4740s, I mean, it just makes sense. It would absolutely have to have some sort of a pullback like this to pick up buyers on the value trade and then get higher. It absolutely has to, you know, has to have these pullback areas to go higher, doesn't it? Look, look, look at this whole month here really of september pull back and then fine load it up let's go so i think you know given like a measured move right this is using a measured move technique here's the size of the down move, prior pullback if i take that reference it against the prior high here this is what you get now that's how you would use a measured move um strategy you know um in a very crude manner but essentially that's it yeah so, you know, the pullback could see us at 44 60s. Uh, I don't really trade the measured move theory, but I could I could see something like 4500s pull back and then get long. I could definitely see that happening. For today, I'm not really looking to be a hero. So, um, you know, we have bounced. The 20 EMA is pretty much sitting as the ceiling here on this market. At 46, 46 by 84s. Um, I would like to be long. I really would, but I mean, all the best business has been done this morning. See that eight o'clock market, or sorry, the reopening 2300 hours push up. Um, you know, eight o'clock by the dip, you're really sitting in the in the middle of a, a very tight range now on that trade. Um, as good as it may look on the charts, I just. I don't think it's that amazing uh, right now. So that is the booze. Dow, I mean, yeah, look, well, let's look at the sell off really. Uh, Thursday, Friday, again, these weren't, yeah, I mean, the pullback on the half two open there was pretty tasty uh, to be shorting that one actually on the spooze. So, Dow, let's look. Yeah, so a little bit cleaner here on the Dow, 34779s, let's just call it 780s here. Um, generally, really nice area of support now. Uh, so it was the high of the 10th of Mar uh, May this year. And then uh, multiple times just providing that resistance. Well, now it's support. And now I think, I actually think we're set for higher prices, to be honest. Uh, we are trading below this trend. So really, you know, if you do want to be long this market, you're going to have to see, or, you know, see this over here on the chart on the side, now trading back below that trend, consolidating all the highs of today, the APAC high really is set in there, very tight APAC range. So you, know, you, you are going to need to see that resistance turning support and then look for the long, but there's, there's no need to jump in there now and get ahead of yourself with that trade you're just not you know this is the definition of you're just not seeing what you need to see to be on the longs if anything you're seeing what you need to see to be on the shorts in the dow so um are we going to get a 200 ema test um who knows who knows i think it's all going to hang on u.s policy response to the current threat of omicron and um, that's really the biggest thing and you know i, I wouldn't mind hearing from uh j j powell to be honest all right, and then uh, I was talking about oil. 
earlier on. Uh, this is oil on the weekly as above. Uh, oh, I did talk about this already. Yeah, I mean, look, I think we can bust about a bust over 7181. This is the probably the fourth time I've seen a move of this magnitude ever in oil. Um, it's just crazy move on the reopen on trade Friday. Down we go. Um, by the time the market opened, I think we've been down about eight nine percent let's see here so from the high there to the market open yeah we're, oh, we were down 4.27 and then we pushed down uh to about 13 percent down on the entire session uh, on the lows and then a bit of a bounce um there over the weekend coming into 71 spot 61 yes, right now um the best trade here i mean you were not going to be catching this short you weren't it was apac uh range you know i mean that's friday 1 a.m to the best trade here was waiting for the open um uh, half two here you go 73.98 short off you go to the races looking at that <coughs> on the daily or the weekly uh you know we do have to come back here and test this as resistance i think all right my throat is is rapidly running out of lubrication here. Uh, potential, potential, long, uh, potential shorts on the pro right. Uh, okay, so that's about it for me for today's uh, look ahead, and this will be pretty much the look ahead for the week. And um, so, yeah, please do click the subscribe if you're watching this in YouTube tomorrow. And uh, you know, got to give thanks to New Squawk guys in London um, who are fantastic at providing uh, me with up-to-date breaking news. And I, I certainly do trade against um, the, the, the information these guys provide me. It's phenomenal. Do go and check them out. Uh, if anyone's interested, just send me a DM um, if they're interested in uh, hearing more from you, Squawk. And uh, yeah, all right, we'll see you out there in the live room. Have a good week. Talk to you then. Cheers.